GraphQL is a query language that is really built with um, application developers in mind. You can define your schema, which is basically all the different entities and how they relate to each other. So you say this is an organization, an organization has many members, and these are the different fields on that organizations and the members have. And then depending on what screen I'm building, what particular user interface I want to build, I can uh, specify the fields that I want, and I can seamlessly traverse across these relationships uh, so that I can get uh, whatever data I want back in just a single response. So, so it's effectively putting a query language at the API endpoint itself. So rather than having a database that's you know siloed, and then you need to build the, the, the API endpoints for each of the queries that you think your users are gonna be using, it's effectively putting the query language right at the, at the edge where the user can access it directly and make those complex queries in a very seamless kind of way. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And um, you know, there are a few restrictions on what you can do. So it's not as generally powerful as a query language like SQL. You know, one of these limitations is that you basically need to know um, how all of this data is structured ahead of time. If you have data that you want to be able to query, you can only query according to that schema. But you know that actually is how most applications are built. So you generally know how your different entity types relate to each other ahead of time. And um, you can, for example, denormalize your data to make you know ag aggregations and, and various uh, computations that you want available ahead of time. Um, you can also parameterize these things, so you can do, for example, pagination or filtering or any of these kinds of things. But essentially what you get back is uh, the JSON object that exactly matches the structure of those entities and fields that you requested.